Hi, welcome everybody for the Wednesday session. Our first speaker today is Damien Calac from University of Montpellier, who's going to be telling us about Calabial structures for multiplicative preprojected algebras. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here despite the weather. Uh, so my first contact with Michel was a uh, Right after my PhD thesis, uh, it was by email, essentially, at first. I don't have the details in mind, but essentially, he he noticed that what I, like something I did in my thesis, uh, like involving the algebra, it could be used to give a uniform approach to uh, deformation quantization and formality theorem, um, like in the differentiable holomorphic and algebraic setting uh, in a kind of uniform way. Um, I won't say much about this today, uh, but I, but I really learned a lot uh, thanks to him, and uh, and also uh, uh, I think when you're just finishing your PhD, it's really great to have someone uh, like him getting interesting in your work uh, and trying to work with you. So thank you very much, and uh, and congratulations. So. Uh, Today, I'll speak about some work that has to do with uh, also what Michel did in a different area. Uh, so let me start with a, with a quite long introduction. So I'll start with a, a quiver Q with vertex set V and edge set E. Uh, I'll take its a double quiver. So it just means that for every edge, uh, I had a, a reverse edge that I called E star. Uh, so if you haven't like E like this, E star goes the reverse way. Uh, and uh, from this, one can produce the, the pre-projective algebra. I think it was introduced by Gedefan Ponomarev. And uh, afterwards, it was used a lot by Lustig and Nakajima for studying, uh, in a, yeah, for studying quantum groups and several uh, uh, stuff in non-commutative algebra. And essentially, you're taking the path algebra of the quiver and you mod out by, uh, uh, by one element. And this element is, uh, taking the sum over all edges of the commutator between the edge and its, uh, uh, its reversed one. So let, let me mention that you may actually as well consider a deformed version of this, uh, where here you could subtract a sum over all vertices, uh, something like, Lambda V E V, where Lambda V uh, is just um, like a scalar, and E V is the idempotent uh, at the vector vertex V. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure this color is very visible, but. Uh... All right. Um, yeah, so uh, if, if we're looking at the representation variety of this algebra. Uh, well, this is get equipped with a, with a GNN action and we can perform some GIT quotients with respect to some character. Uh, this is uh, what is called a Nakajima quiver variety. And under some assumption that, that uh, I mean, guarantees that this would be smooth, uh, uh, these are symplectic algebraic varieties. And um, well, so I should say that the, the symplectic aspects of all this story has been uh, like a lot. Um, studied by Crowley Bovey, Ettingoff, and Ginsburg. And essentially, uh, one very important feature that they notice is that the, the whole of the symplectic geometry of these gadgets here, you can read them directly 
on the preproductive algebra uh, using something that they call bisymplectic structures, which I'm not going to define and explain now because I'm, I want to move forward to the, to the multiplicative version. All right, so then there's a multiplicative version of this preprojective algebra. So uh, this was introduced, I think, by Crowley Bovey and Shaw. So they were studying the, the Dolin Simpson problem, uh, which is uh, if you fix a finite number of conjugacy classes in GLN, uh, you ask yourself, can I find a like a, a collection of matrices, one in each conjugacy class, so that's the the product uh, is the identity matrix. And it turns out that, um, well, I mean, uh, they found a necessary condition for uh, the, existence, the existence of irreducible solution for this problem. And it involves uh, an algebra which looks very much like this. Uh, uh, I mean, the way they, they, they get the solution is uh, involves an algebra which is very much close to this uh, preprojective algebra. And after that, uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, like the, the whole symplectic aspect of the story was studied, of course, by Michel, uh, but also, um, I think, by Philippe Bolsch from a different perspective. And uh, I think Yamakawa. That was for the symplectic, or I should say, rather, the quasi Hamiltonian aspects. All right, so essentially what we do here, uh, we replace this element mu by a different one, let me call it phi, which is defined in the, in the following way. So instead of having a sum, we're going to have a, a product. So it's the product over all edges of uh, the following thing. So one plus E, E star, times one plus E star E inverse. So this takes place in a localization of the path algebra of the double quiver. Uh, the localization is just that we, we just inverse this element here. Uh, all right, so like it's multiplicative because like you obviously see some multiplication. There's, there's some choice to make, which happens to be irrelevant afterwards, but it's something that one has to prove. You have to, to, to choose an order on the edges, because like when you do this product, we have a non-committed algebra, of course, you have to, to say in which order you're taking this product. Somehow, if you know about character varieties, it looks very much like, I mean, between the, the, um, the additive and the multiplicative preprojective algebra, it looks very much like the difference you could have between like looking at the moduli space of flat connection on a, on a Riemann surface and looking at the moduli space of local system on a Riemann surface. Uh, the additive case would be flat connections. And uh, um, yeah, so the, the data, I mean, the, this, this, this uh, condition can, here, this kind of vanishing condition of this element would be a, a kind of condition of on, on vanishing of residues. And, and, and in this case, uh, that's rather some monodromy that, that should vanish, right? So uh, I should say holonomy. Okay. Um, so there's also a deformed version where, uh, yeah. Actually, that's the deformed version but that is useful for the Dillon Simpson problem. Uh, uh, instead of uh, asking that, uh, quotienting that the, by this, we rather quotient by like where. So well, yeah, it's easier to write it that way. So I, I take the 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 part which sits at the idempotent EV, and I want this not to be equal to one now but to be equal to, uh, to some specific element QV, which is invertible. Okay. Oh, so the relation by, by which we were questioning before was like mu equals zero or this equal uh, this color here. 
And now we are questioning by phi equal one or actually phi equal to some specific invertible scalar at every uh, item button. All right, uh, now let me try to write a, a huge diagram that will roughly explain like uh, what is known about uh, this. So we have the localization of this uh, uh, double quiver uh, path algebra. And uh, thanks to some result of Michel, this carries uh, quasi bisymplectic structure. Uh, with a non commutative moment map that is essentially this phi. All right. Um, now, what Michel proved is that uh, taking the representation varieties, this gives rise to um, some quasi Hamiltonian. Uh, GLN spaces. So quasi Hamiltonian spaces have been, uh, it's a notion that has been uh, defined by Alex A.F. Malkin and Men Rankin. Um, instead of having a symplectic variety together with a moment map with values in the Lie algebra or the dual of the Lie algebra, you have some, not exactly something symplectic, and, but, it, but it, it comes with a two form. Uh, it has a moment map now with values in the group. And there's again, uh, a reduction procedure that produces after reduction, uh, a genuine symplectic variety. So here there's a reduction procedure. Um, yeah, actually. Uh, that produce some kind of symplectic space. And again here, uh, there, ha there, there, there has to be assumptions, otherwise you get, I mean, when you pr proceed, proceed with reduction uh, procedure, you may have some singular spaces. So you have to make assumptions so that you get a nice enough algebraic variety there. Uh, all right. Um, so later on, uh, it was noticed that uh, these quasi Hamiltonian spaces, so this is something I, I, I proved, but also like Pavel Safran of did some work on this, uh, that whenever you have a quasi Hamiltonian space, what you get is a so called Lagrangian morphism. Uh, like between quotient stacks. So you have your representation variety X, it's acted on by GLN. So let's, uh, and please, David Murnford, and take a stacky quotient by GLN. And uh, so your, your moment map is gonna go to GLN modded out by itself, where here the action is the, is the adjoint action. Otherwise, it, I mean, if you take the, the translation action, you get nothing here. Uh, so we take the adjoint quotient, and this is something that is known from uh, um, like, yeah, this, this work of Ponte F2 and Vakin Vizzosi, that this is a one shifted symplectic stack. I won't say much about uh, uh, derived symplectic geometry. I, I just want to use it rather as a motivation here. So we have a Lagrangian morphism that way. Okay, and um, the symplectic reduction procedure, in can, it can be interpreted as a, as a Lagrangian intersection uh, uh, thing. So it's a, there's a very nice interpretation of the symplectic reduction using just intersection of Lagrangians or like, pullback of Lagrangian over uh, uh, something with that is shifted symplectic. All right, so that's one part of the diagram. Yeah, I won't have much space, but uh, um, now there's a recent work of Brav and Dykeroff where uh, they also provide a way to produce some Lagrangian morphisms between uh, to derive stacks. Uh, and they, that's something that they, they call some relative Calabio structures. This is something I will define on a, a functor. 
So that's Brav and Dikarov, and Dikarov, sorry, I think. And uh, you can go to Lagrangian morphism by taking uh, the derived stack of perfect complexes. Of course, if, you, if you're doing this, you, you won't get anything of the form like X modulo GLN or NGLN modulo GLN. Uh, but in some cases, you can restrict to some open substack of amplitude zero uh, perfect complexes, which is an open uh, substack of the, of the whole stack of perfect complexes. And in, in some specific case that come from this, this, this kind of uh, representation of algebras, then we get back things of, of that sort. And uh, and they they have a like another procedure where you can actually instead of doing pullbacks, namely intersections, you do pushouts. Uh, you get some absolute Calabio structures, and then again taking this stack of perfect complexes, one can back a, a symplectic spaces. And like what is known up to now is that uh, this diagram essentially commutes, uh, like I'm saying essentially because like there are a bunch of assumptions to make for, for this to work. What I wanna talk about today is first of all, uh, explain to you and give example of the, what these relative Calabio structures and functors are. And also tell you that uh, one can extract from them in case we work with this uh, localized double uh, quiver path, path algebra, um, we can extract from them uh, these quasi bisymplectic structures on these non commutative moment maps in such a way that uh, this diagram will commute in the end, which somehow give you that uh, these relative Calabio structures in the end, like if you go through this whole process, they give you some symplectic structures on. Uh, on some on on this uh, uh, multiplicative quiver varieties, and these symplectic structures they do coincide with the traditional one that were defined much before. All right. So, All right, so let me start with, uh, with Calabia structures. So let's start with the definition uh, and a bunch of general facts. And we'll go through examples later. So first of all, uh, let me start with uh, some smooth a DG category. Uh, by smooth, I mean homologically smooth, which means that uh, A is dualizable as an A by module. Uh, an N Calabio structure on uh, such a DG category is a class uh, in the negative cyclic homology of A. Uh, that is such that its underlying Oshil class, which I, I will denote by this C natural like this, is non-degenerate. And let me explain what I mean by non-degenerate. Um, all right, so this class C you can view it as a map from, let's say, uh, K, to uh, the negative partial complex. Sorry, I, 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 I might have this tendency uh, to write HC minus for the, for the complex that computes the negative cyclic homology. 
So a class of degree n, I viewed as a map from k shifted by n to the complex, okay? Um, or a homotopy class of a map. So that's C. Then we have a map uh, from HC minus to HHA. And uh, this is just the composition, just C natural. But uh, the Horsch homology, it's, uh, it's nothing but uh, the Dirac tensor product of A with itself over AE, where AE is A tensor A up. Um, but it turns out that it, because A is dualizable as an A by module, uh, an element in here, this is just the same as a map from the dualizing by module shifted by N to A, right? And the non-degeneracy condition requests that this map must be an equivalence or a quasi-isomorphism. That's what the non-generacy condition uh, uh, is asking for, okay? I just want to warn you that uh, uh, for people who are, who are used to Calabia structures, yeah, in some, like, in some older papers, uh, people just request to have a, a, a Hochschild class and they don't ask for a cyclic lift. Uh, in some cases, actually, you you you, you know that there is a cyclic lift, but not always. So it's important. That's an additional piece of structure that is important here. Uh, let me give some examples. So the first example, uh, it's uh, when A is just a commutative algebra. And let me take the commutative algebra of uh, Laurent polynomial in one, vari in one variable. Um, and there's a, so this is one Calabio. And the class C is just x minus one dx. Indeed, uh, um, yeah, hc one uh, of A in this case is just, um, well, uh, kx dx. So if you prefer, you can write it d log x, but it's not exact. I mean, uh, log x does not exist in this uh, thing. Okay, uh, more generally, uh, if x is a smooth Calabio variety of dimension n, then uh, Rav and Dikarov they prove that the DG category of coherent sheaves on X, of complexes of coherent sheaves, um, is N Calabio. All right. Um, finally, I mean, if, uh, I don't know, if M is a smooth manifold uh, oriented, compact, I mean, yeah, I mean, closed without boundary. Um, then uh, the category that I'm going to, that they call, and I will call with them DG sync. So what is this category? Objects are just uh, elements, uh, just points of the space M. And um, uh, morphisms, will be chains, yeah, let me write this. Uh, so objects are just element of M and uh, morphism from M to M prime between being two points in M, this is just the chains uh, on the path space of M based at these two points. That's the DG category we, we look at. All right. And uh, okay, so this is, uh, yeah, if it's of dimension N, this is N Calabiao as well. So you can think of Calabiao categories as oriented stuff somehow.
So, like, I mean, there are many places where people use uh, uh, Calabria categories. Uh, in if you look at the paper of Rav and Dikarov, there there are two notions actually of uh, of Calabria structures. They call right and left Calabria structures. The one I'm using here are, are the left Calabria structures. Uh, the, the, for the right carrier structure, you assume that A is proper and like the definition is a bit different. All right, and then they introduced the notion of a relative carabio structure, uh, which I think was inspired by some previous uh, definition that was given by Toen in some proceedings. Um, and yeah, let me write it in a in a in a bit of a fancy way. So assume that we're having a co-span of digit categories. Um, so it's a co-span of smooth digit categories. All right. Um, and uh, an and Caravio structure. on such a cosman uh, it's just a, like a diagram of this form it's a span in the it's a correspondence in the opposite category it's a resonance yeah all right sorry um, yeah so an n can have your structure on such a diagram um, that is the data. Um, uh, so it's a uh, it's a homotopy commuting diagram. So let, let me write it that way, and, and I explain later. So we have uh, HCA, HCB. And HCC and a natural uh, transformation, natural isomorphism there. So here we, what we have concretely is that CA is going to be a degree n uh, or, uh, negative cyclic class in A, and CB is going to be an n negative cyclic class in B. And what we want is that uh, these two class coincide. When we push for, we, we push them forward to C, but it's not that just that they coincide. We we need the data of something that make them coincide, right? Um, so in, in very concrete terms, it means that uh, C A is a degree n negative cyclic uh, cycle. Uh, in, for A, uh, C, B, same for B. And then there is this thing here in the middle, which is just telling you that uh, if you map C, A by F and C, B by G to classes uh, for uh, C, and you make the difference, this is going to be exact, and the data of eta is, is giving you somehow the, the, the exact term. So you have something like this in the, in the negative cyclic complex. OK. All right, so that, that's the total differential for the negative cyclic complex. Uh, OK, so that's not sufficient. Uh, there's additionally a non-degeneracy condition. Uh, so we, 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 I'll come to this in a, in a moment. Uh, so that's part of the non-degeneracy condition. There's a so non-degeneracy condition is a condition on on these two guys and on Ida. So the non-degeneracy con, non -degeneracy condition is telling us that, well, when we go to Orschel classes, uh, these guys are non-degenerate in the previous sense. So they induce uh, quasi-isomorphisms between uh, the dualizing complex and A 
for C A and the dualizing complex of B and B up to a shift for, for B. Uh, but there's also an additional non-degeneracy condition for the homotopy here. Uh, so let me write it. Um, all right, so uh, we start from the dualizing complex of C. Um, we can map it by F to the dualizing complex of A. Uh, well, we have to tensor this with C, okay? Uh, but now we know, thanks to this, that there, I mean, we know that thanks to CA, there's a map to A, from the dualizing complex of A to A, and this map is an equivalence. So we have this here. And now we can apply uh, F again, tensor identity, and land in C. On the other hand, yeah, the other pass is like very similar. We have uh, uh, the, the dual of the map G that goes to B This is again, uh, thanks to, so that, that's thanks to CA. This one, thanks to CB, is equivalent to B tensor CE over B. All, yeah, sorry, all the tensor product are derived. So let me not try the like L left derived everywhere. And here we have the map G tensor identity. And the non degeneracy condition, so, so this diagram it's a, it's a square uh, that lives that, that is in the category of C e by, uh, of C by modules. This category it's a stable infinity category. So in particular, uh, asking that that uh, this square is Cartesian or co-Cartesian, it's just equivalent. So let's say we ask that it's a it's a Cartesian square, and that's the non jersey condition. All right. These maps? Oh, that just, I mean, it's, it's I mean, we, we, we're given a map F from A to C and so that's just, a, that's F tensor identity. So that's, that goes from A tensor CE over AE to C tensor CE over CE, so that's C. Uh, where, oh, the, I'm sorry, th this B is not this one. I, I'm sorry about this. That's just the, the I mean, th this equation lives in the, in the negative cyclic complex. And that is just uh, the differential from the negative cyclic complex. That's just the, the, the Orschel differential minus U times the, the cone boundary operator. Is that fine? Sorry, the, the what, the U? Eta? Yeah, so uh, eta is actually what makes this diagram commute. So, it, so, so uh, we, we have a homotopy commuting diagram. This eta, like if you want, you have a two cell here, that's eta natural. Uh, that's, a, that's a fancy way of writing this commuting diagram, but after you've, you've mapped from negative cyclic to Orschel homology, and then you use dualizing complex to rewrite this, this commuting diagram like this. So that, that is still, I mean, the homotopy commutativity is still given by eta. And then, uh, the, so that is given by the data we have. And then the condition is that this homotopy commuting diagram should be homotopy co-Cartesian or Cartesian. Uh, Damien, can I ask a question? Uh, yes. Uh, is this a definition you have like, equivalent to the bravd dikerhoff definition on uh, the functor from A disjoint union B to, to C? Yes. Is it, uh, but here you also assume that A and B are uh, in Calabial. Yeah, so that's, uh, 
Yeah, the, the fact that I am saying that uh, C A and C B are non-degenerate in the previous sense, oh, okay. that guarantees that A and B are, are Calabio. Okay, yeah. That's completely equivalent to their definition. Okay. Yeah. So let me give some examples of such things. <clears throat> Yes, it's just uh, to, to say a few words, a few more words about the, this question. Um, so, Brav and Dikarov, the, the the request that some fiber, uh, some some null homotopic sequence is a fiber or a cofiber sequence, uh, but it's it's completely. I mean, if you, yeah, you're in a. So, like, in one of the one of the term is a sum. So basically, you can rewrite things as a as a as a Cartesian square. Uh, it's just that this definition is a bit more symmetric. So it's a it's very useful when you start to compose span, uh, um, like uh, proving things diagrammatically. It's a, it's easier that way. All right. Uh, yeah. Examples. So the first example is. Uh, let's say if you have M, a compact, uh, smooth, oriented manifold of dimension, let's say N plus one with a boundary. And let me just split the boundary into two parts. So we just view this manifold with boundary as a, as a coercion. Uh, then, uh, well, if we apply the functor DG sync to this, um, this gives us an example of an N Carabia cospan. Uh, I mean, and the way to prove this essentially uses relative Poincaré duality. Uh, then uh, another example, it's, uh, uh, it's the algebraic version of this example. Uh, let's take X, a smooth uh, N plus one dimensional algebraic variety. Uh, and inside this, take D, a smooth divisor that is Calabiao, and such that its class is anti canonical. Then, uh, if you take coherent sheaves on X, um, we have coherent sheaves on D. We have a map that way. Uh, yeah, so I'll have to, let me put the empty DG category on the right side. Uh, that's also an example of an n Calabioco span. Uh, yeah, let, let, let me say that whenever we have like a Calabios cospan where one, on one side, on one hand, uh, we have a, we have the empty DG category, so the somehow the initial DG category. We call this a Calabio morphism, and you can rewrite the definition of a Calabio cospan as a Calabio morphism from like the disjoint union. I mean the the sum of uh, uh, yeah. So let let me write this. So that's just a remark. Uh, so this is a Carabioco span. If and only if, if you're taking the co-product of A and B, on this you put the Carabio structure, which is the difference of those two. So namely, you take the reverse Carabio structure on B, you get a map to C, if and only if this is a Calabiomorphism. So I think 
again uh, about Alex question. Uh, I, I went the reverse way from Brav Dikarov. So I first defined Karabioko span and, and gave the example of morphism as a specific example. They first defined cardiomorphism and then define cardiocospan cardio span that way, but uh, that, that is completely equivalent. Okay, so let me give now an example of, of the first example. Uh, let me take N to be S1. So just notice that DG sync of N is equivalent to uh, KX plus or minus. It's Morita equivalent to this. Uh, so that's the first thing. And one can very easily prove that the the Calabio structure we get from the orientation on S1 is exactly the one that is given by a D log X here, which you could call the residue Calabio structure. Uh, now, we also have that DG sync of, I don't know, the cap here. Uh, but uh, that, that's a contractible space, so that's just equivalent to K. Uh, um, that gets a map from DG sync of S1, which is KX plus or minus one. And this map is nothing, I mean, through these equivalences, it's nothing but the evaluation at one, right? And this carries a Calabio structure, a relative Calabio structure. Um, Indeed, I mean, uh, it, it's definitely true that if you take the class that is given by x inverse dx here, you push it forward there, uh, it, it's, it vanishes. Then you have to work a little bit to prove that the non jersey condition is satisfied. And that's one thing. Uh, let me mention that actually you could replace uh, evaluation but at one by evaluation at any q uh, that is invertible, the result would be still true. Uh, there's still a Calabio structure there. And finally, before going to the quiver example, um, hmm. yeah, I want to mention a, a nice feature of Calabio Cospan is that they compose well. So let me be a bit short here. What do I mean by this? I mean that if you have a Calabios cost span like this, let me just write the diagram without writing the name of the category. And you have another one, such that its, it's starting point is the ending point of the, of the previous one. Then you can perform the push out and the big hat is a new Calabioco span. So they do compose well. Uh, uh, and as examples, let me give you two things. So assume you would have a, a some DG category, and it would receive uh, and you would have a, a Calabiomorphism like this. Uh, you can compose it so Calabiomorphism, recall that's just a Calabioco span with the empty guy there. You can compose it with a nice um, Calabioco span, which comes from, uh, so that, that, is, that is just DG sync of S1 twice. So that's just a DG sync of S1, disjunct union of S1. Uh, you can use the pair of pants. So 
So th this guy is nothing but k. So the non-commutative uh, algebra in two invertible variables. And you can just push this out, which means that uh, you had like uh, two specific elements, uh, invertible element in your algebra. And you can essentially, what you're doing is you're fusing them. So let me write a fuse for this. So that's one thing. So you, you, from one Carabio, relative Carabio structure, you get a new one uh, by fusing some, uh, some elements. And uh, you can also do the same with uh, this other. Yeah, so let me write it here. So there was uh, K and empty. So we can also push out here, which means that, oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Sorry. Let me write this. Uh, yeah, let me rewrite this here. So we have like uh, A, assume that it comes with a Carabio, uh, relative Carabio structure from this, this algebra here. Uh, now we can use the Carabio cospan, which is given by evaluation at Q. And that's what I want to call the reduced algebra, which becomes a Carabio cospan between the empty guy in itself. And there's a more general result that, that is telling you that that's the same as an absolute Carabio structure. So that is just, I mean, if you look at what it is, that is just A. So if you look at this as, a, as just an invertible element in A, that's just modding out by the relation that phi, phi is equal to Q, right? All right. Um, sorry? Yes? Yeah. So, yeah. So, on the, on the on the the Calabria map from k x k y to a, that's given by two specific elements, uh, based at some maybe some idempotence, and uh, and yeah, I didn't say, but the map that we have here, these are just the inclusion of uh, uh, like there, and and below that's the map. Yeah, I should I should rather write z here. And that's z equal x, y, let's say. Yes. So I think I only have three minutes left. So yeah, I want to really give the quiver example. Um, let me, so let me first do the, so we're going back to the multiplicative quiver variety case. So let me start with Q being uh, the, sorry, A to quiver. Um, so in this case, the, the moment maps, I mean, the, the map looks like uh, this. So, so Q is just one, two, Q bar, let, let me write A. Um, okay, so this map, it sends X to, um, E1 plus A star A inverse and Y to E2 plus A A star. And uh, like it's 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 pretty easy to prove that there's a Calabio structure on this map. And the way you do it is you first exhibit an Oshield class, 
in a very explicit way. I mean, it, that's just computation. Uh, it's just a few lines. And then what you do is you prove that in, in this very specific case, there is existence and unicity of a cyclic lift and, and you're done. Uh, so that, that's, uh, uh, and how you do the journal case. Well, you take your quiver, it has a certain number of edges. So you repeat this as many times as you have edges in your quiver. And then your quiver is obtained as a, as a quotient of this kind of big disconnected quiver by identifying some, some, some vertices. But fusing vertices, that's exactly uh, the procedure that we have here on the left. So you just apply fusion. So that gives you uh, a relative, oh, and that's key. Uh, that gives you a, a relative Calabio structure on uh, a map from several copies of Kx plus or minus one. So that you, what you get, it's a Calabio structure on such a thing. And how do you get uh, a Calabio structure on the quotient, on the, on the, on the deformed algebra? Uh, so uh, you get a Calabio structure on, let me write phi equal Q just for the quotient that gives you the, uh, the deformed multiplicative preprojective algebra. This, uh, you obtain it by reduction, which is by applying the push out that we have on the right here. Okay, so just to conclude, let me uh, uh, let me mention briefly, like in one minute, how do we get that uh, these procedures somehow leads to this somehow the same construction that Michel did in his paper when he defined the quasi bisymplectic structure on these algebras. And actually, first of all, he went exactly the same way. So he did define things for the A2 quiver and then obtain everything by fusion and reduction. So the, in the end, what you have to do is to have a procedure that tells you how to go from these category structures to these quasi bisymplectic ones, and then prove that in the A2 case, it gives the same thing and it's compatible with fusion and reduction. So. That's what we did with uh, Tristan Bozek and Sarah Shirotsky. And uh, the main tool for the comparison, it's a map uh, that you have from the, uh, let me write A being KQ bar lock, uh, from the reduced uh, uh, negative cyclic complex. So that's this complex. There's a map from this to an avatar of the Durham complex in the non, non commutative case. So there's a, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I can write it, but uh, so let me write this and let me write R for the algebra, which is the sum over all item potents. Uh, basically, we are taking the Durham algebra modded out by some commutators. Uh, and here we have some differential. It's the universal double derivation minus the non-commutative Durham differential. And the fact that there's such a map in the homotopy category of complexes, actually, I mean, this map is given by a zigzag of maps, but uh, in the homotopy category, we do have a, a map. Uh, that's given by a work of, uh, uh, I think, Ginsburg and Schedler in a very nice paper with a, I think that's in this one that there's also a super nice appendix by, by Boris Tsigan. Uh, and essentially what we do is we take a cyclic co-cycle, which you could write like this. I mean, omega two plus U times omega three plus et cetera, many terms. And this, I mean, this relative Calabio structure that we have, this thing should be a homotopy for the pullback of the, of the structure there. 
So we have that, we have an equation of the type like B minus UB of a huge thing like this being, uh, I mean, uh, phi of the class X minus one DX. Yeah, let me write this in quotes. And if you map this in here, you get the same type of equation and you expand this equation into condition in the use. You take the first two conditions for you, I mean, for the power zero and power one. And that gives you exactly the condition that Michel gave for his definition of a quasi bisymplectic algebra. So I think, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm a bit over time and I'm, I'm ending now. Thank you. <laughs>